Man, what a, what a beautiful day it is today. You know, it's so funny. The past three weeks, we've been wanting to do outdoor services, drive-in services. And I look on Monday and it's like 58% chance of rain. And then it comes to Sunday, it's like perfect weather. I think like I just need to like grow my faith and we should just do it and just like hope. But man, we're, I'm just so excited today to be celebrating Father's Day with you. Today is actually my very first Father's Day ever. Yeah. And like... I'm telling you, it's so surreal. Beth was like being so cute this morning on Instagram. She's like posting all these photos of me. I'm in my office supposed to be praying. I'm just crying because I'm like, my daughter's so amazing. I, like I, we should celebrate her on Father's Day, not me. That's kind of how I feel. But man, we're just excited um, that you guys are with us today. If you don't know me, my name is Dustin Bennett. I'm the lead pastor here at Victory Church on the Rock. And we're just excited that you guys are joining us today. And if you're with us last week, you know, we started this new kind of mini series called the human connection, where we, where we started this conversation talking about how can we continue to connect with humanity, especially coming out of this past year and a half where human connection has been a lot harder for us to even find, human connection. And last week, we specifically went back to the beginning of humanity, and we started, t- started talking about um, the, the importance of human connection, why God created us for human connection. We started talking about Adam and Eve and talking about vulnerability and shame and just how God wants relationship with us and he also created us for relationship with other people, the human connection. And today we're going to be concluding this series. Again, it's a really short two-part series, but I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show. It's called Nailed It. I don't know if you've seen it, anyone? Nailed It, it's called. So what Nailed It is, is this this show where they have professional bakers bake a cake and then normal people that aren't professional bakers come in and they try and copy what these bakers make, right? So they try and go in and they try and make it and it's a show. But anyway, I have a picture I want to show you um, right here. You can probably tell which one, um, which one was made by the professional. I'm just assuming you can, you can guess which one. The, right on the, the one on the right was definitely made by a normal person like me uh, where I just don't even know how to bake. Then we can go to the next one here. Right here, boom, boom. Like, yeah, all I know is that people are trying really hard, right? They're trying really hard to be able to copy and, and compare and say, hey, you know what, I want to make this. Uh, we can go to the next one here. Another one. They, again, they're trying really hard, right? They are. They're trying really hard. Um, again, I would probably be worse than this. Like, I honestly would. We can go to the, the next one here too. Okay, so this is the one they made. It's Donald Trump, right? So th- this is the one they made of Donald Trump. Now, the next image I might show you might scare you. And I don't intend this to scare you. I just intend this to show you. This is what this person made. Oof. Like, I, I mean, again, I, I, I don't want to scare you with that image. I don't want you to think about this later on this evening. But they tried really hard, right? They tried to make this thing. And I'm telling you, that second picture, the first time I saw that, I honestly was a little bit scared. I was like, I might have nightmares about this, this image that has been put into my brain. And, you know, when I was thinking about this show, it really got me thinking about comparison. How, you know, when we look at the first image, it, it's this beautiful thing. And then we look at the next one, obviously not as good quality. You know, we, we as humans, I think one thing we do as humans is we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. We're constantly in this position of comparison we compare uh we, we we compare our life we compare our everyday life to even what sometimes what we see on media on social media on tv in movies we're always comparing our life to other people and we just do this constantly we we compare how we look we compare how we dress we compare the houses that we live in the cars that we drive we compare how well behaved our kids are we compare all the time we're constantly comparing thinking about hey they're doing this and i i'm just i can't measure up i'm not good enough or they're way way better than me because we're always comparing comparing our our professions our jobs our careers our education our everything We're comparing. But comparison kills anything good. Comparison will kill anything beautiful. Comparison will destroy anything that God is doing in your life because we're we're, we're trying to be something else. We're trying to attain something else that's not us. We're trying to be and attain things that that we weren't even supposed to attain and try and compare our lives to other people because we will never have deep human connection if we're, uh, if that we're longing for, if we're constantly comparing our life. 
We're never going to actually have deep human connection if we're constantly looking at other people and seeing how much better we are than them or how much worse we are than them. We're never going to have deep human connection because we'll always be striving to be something else, to have something else, or to sway away from even where God is leading us as individuals. Comparison will destroy anything beautiful because everyone on our planet was created equal. We are no better or no, no worse than anyone else. God loves all of us, and God created each of us to be unique and beautiful. Comparison will kill the human connection. And we, when we look around us and we, we see everything that we aren't rather than, rather than everything that we are. Right? We look around us and we say, man, I wish I had this. I wish I had this. I wish I looked like this. I wish I did this. Rather than actually taking a look and saying, this is who I actually am. Who has God created me to be? What does God want me to do? What does God have for me in this life? What does God have for me? Rather than saying, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. And there's a story in the Bible. There's two sisters and how they spent their time with Jesus. And this is in Luke chapter 10. It says this, uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? He says, tell her to come and help me. Tell my sister to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. And today, I have kind of two thoughts when it comes to comparison and the human connection that I want to share with us today. And then my first thought today is this, is that comparison destroys anything good. What Martha was doing only became a problem when she made it a problem. You know, Mary was look, or Martha was looking at her situation saying, look what I'm doing. And my sister is not doing this. She is not doing what I think she should be doing. She's not doing what I believe that she should be doing in this moment. She's doing the opposite. It's like, I need help. I'm doing something bigger and better than what Mary is doing. It only became a problem when Martha made it a problem. When she started comparing what she was doing with what Mary was doing, she got bitter towards her sister. Right, she got bitter saying, hey, hey, Jesus, do you look how lazy my sister is? Do you see how lazy she is? Do you see how she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing? Go and tell her. This is unfair. Jesus, it is so unfair what she's doing because I'm doing all the work. I'm preparing dinner. I'm doing all of this stuff. What she is doing, what Mary is doing is bad and it is wrong. And sometimes different is not always bad and wrong. You don't know, Martha had this thought where she said, hey, what you're doing is bad and it's wrong. But the reality is, is that different, again, is not always bad or wrong. It's just different. It's just different. We're just different as individuals. We have different gifts. We have different talents. We have different things about us that God created. And oftentimes when we see people or we see things that are different than us, we think that it's either better or worse. We don't sometimes even believe that, that the beauty of humanity is that we are unique. The beauty of humanity is that I'm not like you, that I am different. That's the beauty of what God created us for. But I think sometimes it's so hard for us to actually believe that. To believe that who we are is actually good enough. To, to believe that who we are is actually beautiful enough. So we constantly are comparing. Because comparing only breeds disaster. It only breeds disaster in your life. It either elevates them or it elevates us. And when we compare, we're saying, hey, you're better than me, or hey, you're worse than me. And we're elevating people based on how we view them when we compare our life to their life. It elevates them. We feel better or we feel worse than other people. You know, when I was growing up, uh, my, everyone thought my brother was going to be the pastor. And I'm the younger, I'm the middle child. And so everyone thought my brother was going to be the pastor. He was like leading worship. He was like speaking. And I was sitting there listening, getting into trouble. I was like talking out of turn. I was like disrupting class. And my brother's like this perfect human, right? And everyone's like, yeah, he's going to be the pastor. And then, and then when, when I actually stepped in and became uh, the youth pastor at my old church, everyone was like, what? Like, how did you get there? Like, I remember you. Like, I had somebody come up to me like, I remember you when you were in this youth group, and you sucked. 
Like, you were so, like, annoying. Like, you talked too much. You got in trouble all the time. How did you get here? And I remember growing up thinking, hey, I'm never going to actually be like him. I'm never actually going to be able to do what I want because he is the guy. And again, this is not his fault. This was an internal thing that I walked through because I was saying, hey, I'm not good enough. You know, he has what I wanted. And, and so I would strive and, to be like him. And I'm telling you, me and my brother could not be more different. We could not be more different. But I've learned the more, the older that I think we get, the more we realize how beautiful God created us to be. That we don't need to be like anybody else. That, you know what, God has us here. God has me here. God has me even in this church, has all of us in this church for a purpose. We're not supposed to be like anybody else. We're not supposed to be a church like another church. We're supposed to be unique. We're supposed to be beautiful. And we're supposed to step into what God has for us, not what God has for them. We can't compare. Comparison is poison to the human connection. Comparison brings relational distress. When we compare ourselves to people closest to us, it brings distress to our relationship. It does. Like, like when I compare myself to Beth, I'm like, man, she is like so incredible, like a great, incredible human. And, when, and what I do is I compare her highlights, the things she's great at, at my lowlights, right? Oftentimes we look at people's strengths and we compare them to our weakness and we think they're better than us. The reality is we just have different strengths. Like I don't know if you have social media, but you go on social media and everything on social media when you're on Instagram or Facebook is like highlights of people's lives, right? It's like, I'm on vacation. And you're like, wow, my, my kid's bedroom is an absolute mess. This is where I am. I'm not, I'm not on vacation. We compare our normal life to people's highlights. And when we do that, I'm telling you, that's going to bring distress to relationship because we're going to think that their life is so much better than ours, but it's not. It's just the highlight that they have. We all have highlight reels, but I think we all have low light reels that we don't share with people. And that's what we compare people's highlights to is our low lights. And when we do that, again, it's gonna be like I, we start to have a break in relationship because we start to think, oh, they wouldn't even want to have a relationship with me. Right? If only they knew the pain, if only they knew the problem, if only they knew what I was going through, they wouldn't want a relationship with me. They, they, if they knew how broken I was, and so we break away from relationship when we start comparing. And when we start comparing, we plant seeds of doubt in our heart. Doubt that we're good enough. We, we plant seeds of doubt that, that our abilities, that we're strong enough, that we're good enough. Because we think, oh man, like, like I just, I'm starting to doubt who I am because they're so good. That person is just so much better than me. That person is just such a better parent than me, a better husband than me, a better whatever than me. And we just sit there and we compare and compare and compare. We doubt we have what it takes because someone is better than us, better in better shape than us. They have, they're more attractive than us. They have a better job than us. They have a nicer car than us. They have more money than us. They have better kids than us. They have a better wife than us. And we, 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 we think this, but we don't actually sometimes talk about it. Sometimes we're comparing so much. You know, in the moments I've had where I've seen break in marriages, this is, I think, sometimes what it is. Because we're comparing our marriage to what we dream about. The, the, the marriages that, that we see, and we're like, man, I don't have that. And I think the reality is every marriage has stuff in it that's hard. Like it's not, every marriage is not easy. And sometimes we just think that if we can get out of this relationship, we can get into this relationship, we'll feel better. But the reality is you're not going to feel better. Because you're constantly, constantly, constantly comparing. Because Martha, right, she started to see herself as doing the right thing. The one that was actually serving Jesus rather than listening to Jesus. She said, I'm doing the right thing. She's not. And Jesus, how do you not notice that? How do you not notice that I'm better than her? How do you not notice that I'm actually making dinner? I know you're hungry. I got dinner for you. How do you not notice that? You know, some of us, we've gotten so good at serving that we forget to sit at his feet. We've gotten so good at serving, we got so good at sharing our gift that we don't actually spend time with Jesus. Serving, of course, is amazing. Like, I'm telling you, let's serve. Serving is beautiful. Serving is an opportunity for us. It's amazing. But if all we're doing is serving, we're not actually spending time with Jesus, we need to learn how to step into a relationship deeper with him. We can't just be constantly comparing. You know, Martha serving God in the way of her relationship with her sister. 
and it got in the way of her relationship with Jesus. And when we really think about serving, obviously we're called to serve, but sometimes serving can actually get in the way of spending time with Jesus. And we have to learn how to make that balance. Of Yeah, okay, it's good to serve. And again, I'm, I love serving. But we also have to spend time with Jesus. We compare and, you know, it's interesting when we compare, we also step out of divine direction that God has for our life, right? Because God has, has a call for us. You know, a call of who we're supposed to be. And oftentimes when we compare, we kind of step out and we say, no, 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 no. That's not what I want. I want this. Because this is what success looks like. This is what, this is what I want. I want money. I want fame. I want the car. I want the house. And Jesus is sitting there and I think he's saying like, to be honest, it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Like, I care more about your character than your career. Right? He says, I care more about who you actually are than what you do. Like, I want you to be who I've called you to be. And that might be something different than what we've ever need. Because we need to learn how to walk in the uniqueness that God created us for. You know, we, we, we also do this with failure. We compare failure. I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you're walking through a hard thing. And you share it with somebody and somebody starts to compare their stuff with your stuff. You know, you have a hard moment, something happens in your life that's hard, and you go and like, hey, I need some support, and like, hey, this is also what I'm going through. We start to compare our pain. We start to say, hey, my story is worse than yours. What I'm going through right now is actually harder than what you're going through, and I don't have time to talk to you about this. I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but I've had that happen over and over and over and over and over again, where I'm walking through stuff that's super hard, and people come out to me and say, hey, what I'm going through is harder. Or like, I remember when I went through something worse than that. So you're going to be okay. I don't know if you've had that. We compare pain. And we, I think we need to learn how to not compare pain anymore. Because healing comes not from comparing, but by empathy and connection. If we want healing from our pain, it's not going to come by comparing it. It's going to be by connecting with other people. And stepping into deeper relationship with one another. That's when we're going to find true human connection is when we stop comparing our stuff and we start connecting with other human beings. When we can sit with people in their pain. When we compare, we elevate ourselves above people's pain. When Jesus, he didn't elevate himself, he stepped into people's pain on the same level. And I think that's like part of why I love Jesus so much is because he's not a, he doesn't sit up there looking at us and saying, wow, that sucks. He says, hey, I'm going to sit with you in your pain. And I'm telling you, Jesus has a lot of pain to compare to our pain, right? Like he really does. But he doesn't do that. He actually just connects with us and says, hey, I'm here with you in this moment. And I believe that that for us as humans, if we want real human connection, we need to learn how to sit with people in pain. To not compare pain, to not, to not do anything else. Just sit with people and be present. We don't have the answers. We don't even have the resources some, most of the time. But what we do have is just being present with people in their hardest moment. And that's what Jesus does for us every day. Because life is not easy, as we all know. We all know that life is hard. Life sucks sometimes. There's things that are so, 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 so difficult. Everyone has things that are challenging. You know, and money and, and fame and these things will not bring us happiness. The only thing that will bring us true joy is Jesus. The only thing that's going to bring us full purpose is Jesus. The only thing that's going to bring us deep human connection is Jesus. That's why we're here is to celebrate him and to bring people alongside of us when we celebrate what Jesus is doing in our life. I'm not, and I'm not saying, I want you to hear me, I'm not saying that we can't look at people and strive to be better. I'm not saying that, 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 we, that we can't improve and we can't learn. Because leaders are learners, right? If we want to be a leader, we also have to be a learner. And so I'm not saying that, that, that we can't just always try and be better. But what I'm saying is when we start to compare, that's a problem. Leaders are not comparers. We're all, we always need to be learning. We always need to be growing. We always need to be getting better and improving. Comparison, though, is poison to growth and poison to the human connection. Let us not compare. Let us understand our value, not find our value from somebody else, but find our value in Jesus, in Jesus alone. And we don't need to compare 
because God made us the way we are for a reason. This verse right here, Psalm 139, 13 to 14. You have made all the delicate inner parts of my body and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. How well do you know it? How well do you know who God created you to be? How well do you know it? You know, the author here, the writer here, he's saying, how well I know it. How your workmanship is marvelous. You created me unique. You knit me together. Some of us were sitting here, and we don't even know it. We don't even realize our value. We've been so hurt, we don't realize that, that God created us unique. He knit us together. He, he created us beautiful. You know, oftentimes comparing ourselves to other people is like telling God, hey, you didn't do a good job when you created me. You know, you didn't do a good job creating me. Why can't I be better at hockey so I can go play in the NHL, right? Like, why, why is that not what you created me for? You know, and God's sitting there saying, hey, man, like, what I have for you is so much bigger than you're even thinking. The future I have for you, I created you unique. And I think we step into our purpose when we realize our value as human beings. And so... If comparison is our problem, what's the solution? And that's my second thought today is that celebration builds something beautiful. If we want to step out of comparison, we need to learn to celebrate people. What if Martha had celebrated what Mary was doing, like Jesus did? If we go back to that verse right here, it says, But the Lord said to her, dear, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these things. Then he celebrates Mary. There's only one thing to being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it. He's learned to celebrate her. And, and, and human connection, if we want deep human connection, rather than comparing, we need to celebrate what people are doing. If somebody gets the promotion that you want, that you've been working for, how often do we grumble about it rather than celebrate them? How often when somebody gets the car or gets the house or, or has the kid who gets married and we're like, man, that's what I want. We start to grumble about it rather than celebrate. Say, hey, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy that, 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 that this is happening in your life. It's so easy to compare, but it's hard to celebrate when somebody has something that we want. We need to learn how to celebrate rather than compare. We have to. Philippians 2, 3 says it this way. Don't be selfish. Good thought. Don't try and impress others. Great thought. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. We have to celebrate other people. We have to put them above us. Saying, hey, I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. We were created to connect, not compare. To celebrate, not compare. If we want true human connection. To celebrate other people. And when we try and impress people, we fail people. When we try and impress people, we fail because we can't meet them in our pain and we can't meet them in their pain because we're over here trying to do things to impress people, to make people like us, to make people love us, and we're just sitting there trying to impress people all the time. And it's so interesting in North America, the amount of debt that, that the average individual has here in North America is extremely high. And I think partially why is because we're trying to put on this persona that we have it all together. We're trying to put on this persona to impress people, like, look at my house, look at my car, look at what I have. And we're trying to impress people. But we need to stop impressing people. We need to start connecting with people. So eventually, we can't impress anymore. Eventually, you're going to run out of things to impress people with. Eventually, you're going to run out. And when we do that, we're going to be left with nobody around us, and we're going to be alone. And we see this with celebrities all the time. These celebrities, they have everything that a lot of us wish we had. The money, the cars, the fame, whatever, the house. And there's interviews where they say, I am so desperately alone. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I want to live anymore. When we spend our lives trying to impress people, we're not actually connecting with people. Because people are there for the wrong reason. People are there for the wrong reason when we're trying to impress people, not connect with people. Again, what if somebody got the promotion that we wanted? How would, do you respond? What if someone got the car we wanted? 
I think oftentimes we start to feel sorry for ourselves. Hey, like, I'm not living this life I want to live. I'm not doing what I want. And it's hard. Comparison will, will destroy anything beautiful. It'll destroy any beautiful relationship because comparison tears ourselves down or tears other people down. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says this, so encourage each other. Build each other up just as you are already doing. What are you currently building in people? Are you building in people right now or are you tearing people down? Or are you building in yourself or are you tearing yourself down? What are you building inside of you? Now, one thing I want to tell you is the building process is not easy. It's not even comfortable most of the time. Some of you guys work in construction. We know that when we build something, it takes effort. It takes work. It takes sweat. It takes pain sometimes. Like I've heard stories, like horrendous stories of people in construction, like losing fingers and stuff. You know, when we build, it's not always comfortable. It's not always comfortable when we're building something inside of us. You know, I've had conversations with people. I had a, uh, people come up to me and they have to have real conversations with me about things that I'm going through or things that I struggle with, blind spots in my life. And I'm telling you, those conversations are not easy. When somebody says, hey, I love you, but this is something you need to work on. You struggle with this. Those are not easy conversations. Sometimes they hurt. Sometimes it hurts when somebody says, hey, you do this and it, and it actually hurts me. Or you do this and, and, and it makes me upset, whatever it is. And we have to have these conversations, say, okay, building's not always easy. So encourage each other and build each other up. Building each other up sometimes means saying, hey, you're never going to be able to grow unless you deal with this. You're never going to be able to grow unless you deal with this problem in your life. What are you building in people? What are you building? Can, can we celebrate? Can you celebrate with people even when you are in pain? Can you celebrate with somebody? Can you say, hey, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for what you did, for what you accomplished, for what God is doing in your life. Even if we're struggling, are we, are we able to celebrate people when they have what we wish we had? And not just celebrate outwardly, but celebrate inwardly. Because oftentimes the inward celebration is way harder than the vocal outward celebration. Saying, hey, I'm so excited for you. But on the inside, you're, so, you're struggling so deeply. Are we able to celebrate? I want to encourage you with this thought today. Is that you are enough. And God is not embarrassed by you. He's excited about you. He's not embarrassed by you. He's not looking at you being like, oh my goodness. Look what they're doing over there on earth. He's looking at you and saying, I'm excited for your future. I'm excited for what God, what I'm going to do in your life. I'm excited. He's not embarrassed by you. He doesn't need you to be somebody else. He needs you to be you. He needs you to be you. Comparison is poison to the human connection, but celebration is the antidote. Celebration is what actually brings restoration. Celebration is what actually brings tight relationship. Celebration is what actually brings deep human connection that we're all longing for. If we can't celebrate people, we can't connect with people. If we can't encourage people, if we can't build people up, we can't connect with people. Relationship starts to fall apart when we stop building each other up. When we stop celebrating the things. We start celebrating each other. Connection requires celebration. Celebrating people's victories, not wishing they were our own. Say, so, hey, great victory. I love that. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Let's celebrate together. You know, the body of Christ, when we read through Scripture, is made up of many parts, right? It's made up of many, many parts. The church comes together in each person's uniqueness to build the church. And I think sometimes we're walking around as a church and we're trying to put the parts in the wrong place. We're trying to be something else. We're like a hand walking around with five thumbs. Because we're all trying to be, and we're also like, like we're, we're just trying to be everything else rather than saying, hey, I created you for this, for this purpose. No part in the body is more important. When we're saying we're moving into what God has for us, every part is important and has a purpose. You have a purpose right here in our church. You have a purpose right here in your family. You have a purpose right here in every relationship that you have. There is a purpose there for you. God has something for you that is so beautiful and so much bigger than I think we could ever dream or imagine. 
when we do this, we tend to be like Martha. And Mary isn't doing what I am doing. Therefore, she's wrong. She's the problem. Look at me. Look what I'm doing. Look how much I serve. Look how much I give. Look how much I love my family. Look at me. One way to stop this comparison game is saying, don't look at me, look at him. Look at him. When something victory in your life, thank you. When there's something beautiful in your life, God, I just, I'm so grateful. Someone comes and says, hey, you're doing so good. Be like, man, it's all because of his glory. Because what God is doing in my life. It's not even me. When we celebrate Jesus rather than celebrate even ourselves, let's build people this week. Let's encourage people this week. Let's celebrate people this week. And I know that today, Father's Day, is so hard for a lot of us. I know that. I know that today for some of us brings tough emotion. Some of us, we've lost our fathers. Some of us, we never even had relationship with our father. Some of us, we have kids that don't want anything to do with us. I know that Father's Day is hard for a lot of us. But I want to encourage you, even though it's hard, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Celebrate each other. Celebrate what God is doing. Even when things get hard for us as individuals, let's celebrate what God is doing for us corporately, together. You know, when one of us is having a tough day, I know there's probably one of us who's living the dream. We're sitting on the top of the mountain. Some of us are at the top of the mountain. Some of us are in the valley. And when we're in the valley, we can look up at the mountain and say, wow, look at them. God can do that for me too. God can do that for me too. Let's encourage people. Let's build people. Let's celebrate this people this week. Let's be a church that celebrates people's victories, even if they're victories we wish we had. If we want real human connection, the bottom line is we need to stop comparing and we need to start celebrating. I'm going to pray for us this morning and then the team is going to lead us in a song. God, I thank you that you don't compare us, you celebrate us. God, I thank you that when you were on the cross, you looked at us and said, I love you. God, I pray that today as we step into what you have for us next, as we, as a province, begin to open up, God, I pray that you help us connect. I pray that you help us connect again. I pray that you help us connect with our relatives that we haven't talked to. God, I pray for broken relationships, broken marriages right here in this room. God, I thank you that you're a God who restores relationships that you restored relationship with us. And God, in turn, I pray that you give us wisdom on how to restore relationship. And God, I pray for all of our friends here today who are struggling today on Father's Day. God, I pray for peace for them right now. I pray for your love. I thank you that today we celebrate you as our eternal Father. The Father who loves us despite us, who gives gifts to us, who celebrates us, who takes care of us. God, we celebrate you today. Happy Father's Day. God, we thank you that you are moving in our lives. God, again, we just pray for rest restoration of broken relationship right now in Jesus' name. Any relationships even in this room between each other that are broken, God, I pray for restoration right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for marriages that are on the brink of disaster. I pray for restoration right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for kids who have wandered off, who have ran away. God, I pray for a prodigal son moment where they return home. They return home right now. God, I pray for that right now in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that, that even when people look at us, Victory Church on the Rock, they will look at us as a connected church. A church that loves, celebrates, and that doesn't compare. God, I pray for everyone in this room, everyone watching online. God, I pray you meet us here right now in Jesus' name. Amen.